Well, as countries around the world grapple with the coronavirus pandemic, there are growing calls to address conditions in refugee camps in Europe. Experts fear that a virus outbreak is imminent in overcrowded camps on the Greek islands. Social distancing is almost impossible and poor hygiene could lead to the virus spreading uncontrollably. One woman in a camp near Athens recently tested positive. Activists say the European Union must do more to provide safe housing and conditions. Uwe Johansson is the EU's Commissioner for Home Affairs with Migration being one of her key areas of focus. She joins me now from Brussels. Commissioner, welcome and thank you. What are you going to do? It's a question that haunts many people at the moment. What are you going to do if there's a coronavirus outbreak in one of the badly overcrowded Greek migrant camps? We have to avoid that. Uh, we have to do everything to avoid that crisis to happen. And that's why we are working very hard now to set up an uh, emergency response action plan together with the Greek authorities. And this is now in place. So what we should do now is to immediately evacuate the most vulnerable individuals out of these camps so that they can be, be secured in hotel rooms or apartment and not being affected if uh, the virus break out in these camps. And also supporting with uh, medical equ equipment, medical staff and other kind of measures um, that we now put being uh, make available for the Greek authorities and for uh, IOM and UNHCR that we are working close with to deal with this situation. So it's now been weeks ago a group of EU countries agreed to take in hundreds of une unaccompanied minors from the migrant camps. Uh, you're saying now that that action plan will swing into immediate effect to uh, evacuate those, those kids? No, this is the emergency plan is to evacuate the most vulnerable old people, sick people out of the camps to safe areas like hotel rooms that are available right now outside the camps so they will not stay in these uh, uh, conditions in the camps. The relocation of the unaccompanied minors is also going quite well. We have eight member states that are ready to welcome these uh, children and I do hope uh, that the first relocation will take place in the coming week so that they are now being transferred to transit centers where they are also being tested for the coronavirus and virus and prepared for the relocation to these uh, member states that are welcoming them and for me this is a very important message of a practic so practical solidarity in these times where we really need to uh, lease the pressure on these overcrowded camps on the islands. So you allude to it, you're preaching solidarity, but why has it been so difficult to find a solution for the migrants and refugees who have been stranded there, some of them for years now? Well, since I took office, we have been working, working very hard to find a new uh, deal on migration and asylum that I will propose soon. And I hope that could be acceptable for all member states. And we are also working quite close together with the Greek uh, government and the Greek authorities and the UN organizations to help uh, have better conditions in this overcrowded camp and to release the pressure on these camps by relocating people out of these camps and also to return people. And just finally, who then is actually responsible for the situation in Greece? Of course, the Greek government is responsible for the situation in Greece, but they can't uh, act alone. We have to show solidarity, and the European Commission is providing with a huge lot of money and practical things with people on the ground helping, working day, day and night to help them, and we're also engaging NGOs and uh, UN organizations to help them. So we, they, uh, the Greek authorities and the Greek government is responsible, but we all are responsible to show practical solidarity towards uh, Greece and the migrants in these overcrowded camps right now. Uwe Johansson, EU Commissioner for Home Affairs, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.
Well, more than half of uh, half a million people, rather, in Europe have now been affected with the coronavirus. European Union Chief Ursula von der Leyen and other leaders have criticised the lack of solidarity and coordination among member states. Now von der Leyen says the EU will roll out a huge relief program comparable to the US Rescue Fund for Europe after World War II. Many are calling right now for something which is called this Marshall Plan. Well, I think the European budget should be the Marshall Plan we are laying out together as a European Union for the European people. The Commission will provide loans to those member states that need them to strengthen their short-time work schemes. These schemes now exist and are planned straight across the European Union. Well, let's get more from DW Brussels correspondent Georg Mattis. Georg, talk us through what this new Marshall Plan, what's in it and for whom? Well, the short-term unemployment scheme that Ursula von der Leyen introduced today, having a capacity of 100 billion euros in loans from member states, is only a small part of that Marshall Plan, and we'll still have to see what the whole Marshall Plan will look like. But the unemployment scheme, she said today, is a second line of defence. She wants to offer to all member states. All member states have to provide guarantees in order to participate or in order to benefit from that scheme. But basically what she has said is that these short-term unemployment schemes is some Something that member states 18 out of the 27 uh, already have and she'd like to see it in all the member states and what she wants to provide is basically allowing member states uh, this that's what the scheme does it allows member states to reduce the working hours uh, of people in working in companies and the state will then subsidize their salaries now this is a strong strain on unemployment schemes in member states and so uh, the the fund she has created here she's suggesting that the EU will create uh, then would provide loans to those member states who have difficulty. Uh, Now, all of this will be put in front of finance ministers next week in order to get the green light. And brings us to the next big question. Will this be enough to keep Europe's economies going? Look, a number of things are currently being debated. For instance, uh, state aid rules have been uh, basically uh, been abolished. Uh, the state can fund uh, companies as, as much as they want. Uh, the very strict uh, financial laws have been uh, pushed off the table uh, by the Commission. So a lot of measures the European Central Bank has ingested, 750 billion euros. Von der Leyen today said uh, uh, the, a huge number, 2,770 billion euros have been put in the table in order to face that crisis. We'll still have to wait and see how much of that money will actually be needed for the moment. The sign of the Commission, the sign that the Commission wants to send out is that the EU and its member states take this serious and they do everything they can in monetary terms in order to support member states to prevent them from facing uh, economic consequences, harsh economic consequences from that crisis. Georg Mattis in Brussels, thank you. And here are some more of the latest developments in the pandemic. Spain's death toll has passed the 10,000 mark. It's Europe's hardest hit country after Italy. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has ordered Russians not to go to work for the rest of this month to slow the spread of the outbreak. And more evidence of how the virus is affecting jobs. In the US, six and a half million people claimed unemployment benefits last week, a new record.